Good morning. Good morning. I'm glad. Those who are watching online, there are just so very few people here, but they raised their voices so that it can sound like a big crowd. That's great. And thank you. Welcome to worship today on this, the 20th Sunday after Pentecost. So we're already uh, quite a ways into the year here, and we know with a turning of the weather. We had some nice, beautiful 70s days this week, but now we're back to fall, and uh, it's probably appropriate as we go along and we're approaching the holiday season, too. Uh, thinking of holidays, there are some official and unofficial holidays around this time of year. For those of uh, who are of uh, a more northern bent, uh, 
from our friends in Canada. Happy Thanksgiving tomorrow. And um, let's see, it's also what we celebrate uh, traditionally as Columbus Day, but having served up north and uh, we're in a region with uh, a lot of native peoples, the uh, Indigenous Persons Day is also a thing now that we should uh, kind of remember and as we look back at our varied history of our country and also in that vein for those who uh, have any association with like Duluth uh, it was Life Erickson's day uh, I believe that was yesterday or Friday I forget and uh, uh, it's a more Nordic holiday, I guess, kind of a thing that more local people, I think, rather than national, uh, celebrate. Anyway, uh, looking ahead here, we have some things coming up this week. Of course, the uh, Watch for the Midweek Devotion video coming up, Facebook and YouTube. Also, we have church school here at 5.30, Confirmation at 6.30 at Petersburg, and hopefully that will be in, uh, an in-person thing. Four of the five students that are in uh, confirmation had some association or at least some contact with COVID. And so uh, they had a Zoom session last week. Maybe we'll, they'll be back uh, together this week. And then uh, at seven o'clock, council meets. So we look forward to that too. Uh, next Sunday, special Sunday, uh, church at uh, October 17th, church at 10 o'clock, and we'll be following that by the WELCA Fall Festival potluck dinner. And each family is asked to make their donation, annual donation, $25 to the WELCA and you can either send that in if you can't come to the dinner, but bring it and come and uh, let's make it a, a, a good day, a well-attended day that uh, next week. Maybe that's what people are anticipating that coming next week and uh, so they're taking this week. So anyway, uh, please come and uh, it's, uh, it used to have fall suppers, but this is what we do now. And then the Monday after will be the uh, uh, newsletter, if you have anything for the newsletter for November already. Please bring that or send that in. And uh, there's an announcement there about the raffle for the uh, bedspread, and uh, we've had that. Now on your uh, prayer concern list, you see added this week, uh, on your copy there, I had to write my name, Maurice Moon, the family, friends and family of Maurice Moon. He passed away, right? Yeah, Maurice. And that's Sherman Moan's brother. So please remember the whole family in your prayers. Would you add now to your list, you don't have this, but if you were on Facebook, you saw this. Would you add David Thompson, one of our members, who is currently hospitalized uh, with pneumonia out in Washington State? Um, excuse me, I corrected that last night because I got a call from the family. Okay. Telling me that David passed away yesterday. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, oh, he passed away. Yeah. Um, she let oh. me know about 9.30, I suppose, last night. And oh, um, so I did change it. On, I added it to the notice I'd put up. I put a, you know, okay. update on it. And um, I, I stated on there that whenever I can get an obituary, I will post it. Sure, sure, and then I'm sorry about that. They did call me earlier in the evening. Oh, okay. And and uh, it, uh, I guess I'm uh, saddened to hear that. Uh, so please remember me, his mother, and Christy, his sister, in your prayers uh, uh, for the, and other friends and family of David Thompson who passed. <coughs> 
yesterday. All right, the Noisy Bucket Offering today goes to Red Willow Bible Camp and Ministries, so please uh, consider that uh, gift for that today. We begin our service then. Uh, all our things in the service today are from the Blue Book, With One Voice. And uh, so we ask you to pick that book up. And we'll turn to page number 10, for the, uh, which is the brief order for confession and forgiveness. And would you please uh, rise, uh, stand as you are able. Since we are doing things a little bit differently, I would like to do the uh, column, and this will make the brief order a bit different, okay? I would like to do column on the right side. And for those of you who have been to other churches and other, uh, other churches who have the cranberry colored book, the red new red book, that is the brief order used in the uh, uh, normally used in that book. So let's do the right side of the confession today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that attended to your word we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn, we turn to hymn number 776, Be Thou My Vision.
O Lord, open my lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. We turn to our psalm uh, in the celebrate folder, psalm, a portion of psalm number 90, verses 12 through 17. We read responsibly. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your steadfast love in the morning, so we shall rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad as many days as you afflicted us, and as many years as we suffered in adversity. Show your servants your works, and your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands. Prosper our handiwork. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's pray together the prayer of the day from the uh, for the 20th Sunday after Pentecost from the first page of the Celebrate. Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to what lies ahead, we may follow the way of your commandments and receive the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. reading for the 20th Sunday after Pentecost is found in Amos chapter 5. Seek the Lord and live, or he will break out against the house of Joseph like fire, and it will devour Bethel with no one to quench it. Ah, you that turn justice to wormwood and bring righteousness to the ground. They hate the one who reproves in the gate, and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take from them levies of grain, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and push aside the needy in the gate, Therefore the prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. Here ends the reading. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 4. Indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. 
Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Here ends the reading. Would you please rise for the gospel? Day, from the 10th chapter of the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God above, or God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and mother. The man said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him, and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you have, uh, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the man heard this, he was shocked, and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields, with persecution and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you in peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A jeweler. A jeweler was on a business trip cross country. And he was in an airliner and he was seated next to a middle-aged, elegantly dressed woman. A stranger, but uh, a very nice and affable person. And he noticed on her finger, on her hand, the largest diamond he had ever seen. Being a jeweler, he took a great interest in this. And he said, Madam, you have a lovely ring. Can you tell me the story of that stone? And she said, oh, that certainly I can. That's the famous Klotman diamond. 
It is the second largest diamond in the country. But there is attached to it a curse. The man looked shocked. His eyebrows arched up and he said, A curse? What kind of curse is that? And she leaned over and whispered to him, Mr. Klopman. <laughs> it took me a minute to get that. But Mr. Klopman, of course, was her husband, who had given her the ring. Now in that very old, that very old humor, antiquated probably, and probably with sexist overtones, you know, because of course there was always the tradition, the, um, the woman uh, parading her large engagement ring around, um, and and uh, but it it may be. If in the telling of it, or the fact that that humor exists, says a little something about our attachment to the worldly wealth and worldly goods, as it does anything else. Hopefully no one marries anymore for money, or if they ever, if they did. Uh, hopefully no I'm a woman, or spouse of any gender nowadays uh, has to or, or does marry for money or regards um, it important to stay in a marriage that they, de they deem a curse simply for the sake of the security and the wealth that comes with it. That's the implication of course with this humor is that she kept the ring, I mean, this magnificent diamond, but she had to take with it, of course, uh, to, you know, to pay for it by being married to this man. Um, but hopefully that is not the case in our time. It might be, though. Humans being what they are, we have a um, perhaps an unhealthy, if not dangerous, attachment to the worldly goods and the wealth. And of course, this is nothing new, because uh, it's as old as 2,000 years, if not much, much older, probably as old as human history. But Jesus, of course, uh, or Mark seems to want to note this in this story, of course, that and Jesus commenting on it about uh, how hard it will be for the rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because they are inherently evil? No. Because um, wealth in itself is a bad thing? Actually, no. And there is something to the thought, because, you know, the disciples are so confused by Jesus' teaching at this point. Because of prevailing thought in, in the Hebrew thought, in, in, in the Jewish philosophy, uh, uh, but not just Jewish, in a lot of religions, is that if you are prosperous, you are blessed by God. And there is truth to that, of course, obviously. There is some idea of the blessing uh, of God. Uh, that doesn't mean that's exclusively what God's blessings are, as worldly goods. But uh, if you do well, perhaps indeed it is that you uh, have some, have some blessings. Uh, does that mean that those who go without or who live in poverty are cursed by God? Not necessarily, no. Um, it just it may mean that they're unfortunate, perhaps they were in the wrong place at the wrong time. Perhaps the unfortunateness of human life is that those who are wealthy have not shared as they have ought 
perhaps. I mean, it's a thing to think about, is it not? Is that maybe there is poverty because we need to do a better job of caring for our fellow human beings. Um, there's a lot of different factors involved in this equation and this thought. But it would uh, behoove us uh, to consider what we can do to alleviate any suffering. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the, the disciples are perplexed because surely, I mean, this was thought to be an unbending, overwhelming truth that riches are a sign of God's definite stamp of approval. And that's not always the case because there is a lot of wickedness attendant with, with wealth too. And sometimes uh, a lot of that is ill-gotten gain, as they call it. Um, and so we have to be more careful when we make those assumptions. Um, so that Jesus gives the Jesus the opportunity to address that. And he says, what wealth is, very often, is a trap. Or it is chains. If you ever have opportunity once again to watch the Christmas Carol on TV uh, this coming season, do you know the uh, part there where uh, Scrooge is encountered by the ghost of his old business partner, Jacob Marley, who comes uh, his apparition, anyway, comes in, in bound in chains, which he claims is the wealth that he and his partner accumulated that kept him bound and enslaved during his lifetime and now even in the afterlife. It prevents him from doing any good to help others. And so, uh, wealth there seen as uh, uh, an enslavening, a uh, binding thing. Uh, but the main thing about it, I think, for our purposes and for what Jesus is saying here today, it is, it, it just, it, it keeps you distracted and away from thinking about uh, the kingdom of God and the spiritual blessings and the spiritual gifts God gives us and the things that we should do in our life spiritually to, uh, to benefit and bless others. And Jesus uh, makes it very clear that he considers that uh, if you have wealth, the best thing you can do is to uh, give it away, is to uh, uh, do whatever you can to unchain yourself from it, or, or at least not to, uh, not to let it hold you back from considering uh, what you can do for others. Sell what you own, give the money to the poor, he says, and you will have treasure in heaven. At least you will be able to recognize what God has for you there. Then come and follow me. You'll be freed from that burden. You can indeed follow the way of Jesus more easily. Uh, with less distraction, or less worrying about the accumulation and the security, the securing and keeping of your wealth. I think as much effort and time and uh, worry goes into that as anything else, not just acquiring but keeping it is, uh, is something that holds one back, perhaps. 
And uh, the disciples are wondering, well, if the rich can't be saved, who can? And, of course, then Jesus makes it clear. It is not humans doing it. Even, even giving away and selling and, and departing yourself from your uh, wealth is not what does uh, get you the treasure in heaven. It simply releases you so that God can reach you and grant you those blessings and those insights. And it's amazing, I suppose, what one can see when one is not bound by or, or uh, attracted by uh, the things in this world too, too much. And so uh, that's the message of this day and what uh, Jesus has to say. And leave that stuff behind and you can, um, you can see then what uh, God has to give to you, and he says, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children. Well, when you, you think about that, is that uh, the same thing then, the same trade-off? No. What kind of houses do you think you get? How about this house? The church. You gather together in a house, a home. This is your home. You come to whenever you need to, to be able to be welcomed by brothers and sisters here in church, in the fellowship of the believers, those who follow Jesus. And uh, all these things then are possible when you're not held back by that wealth. Now, okay, it's not easy. And are we just told to go out and, and do it? Maybe, if that's your calling. Now here, I'm not trying to walk back what Jesus is saying, but perhaps there are ways that we need to uh, approach that in a more Reasonable way? I don't know. Maybe that's uh, softening the gospel. I would say that if you can cut yourself off from the things that hold you back from God, well and good. If God's calling you to use the wealth that you have in very positive ways, maybe those are the things that this message is pointing you toward. To find ways in which you can channel those goods uh, more productively than you have been. I'm not sure. It's just something for you to think about, though, this day as you consider. Anyway, do not live so that the wealth that uh, you might have brings curses, as it does from Mr. Klopman to Mrs. Klopman, but to be blessings that can be used for good, that can be used to help, to alleviate suffering, to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, shelter the homeless, and so on. That's God's gracious call to us through Jesus this day. Amen. But I think it begins, of course, with seeking first the kingdom of God. Let's sing that, uh, number 783 in the Blue Book.
25 of the Blue Book, the uh, Apostles' Creed, we turn to that for the confession of our faith. Please stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Take a moment to greet your neighbor with a friendly wave. Our offering today, of course, is the offering plates are in the back on the table still, and the noisy bucket as well. As I mentioned in the announcements, the noisy bucket offering goes to Red Willow Ministries. We will sing our offertory. Oh, and thank you, by the way, for continuing an ongoing support to this congregation. We sing our offertory, Create in Me. Mercy. Hear our prayer. 
eternal God. We thank you for the lives of those who have died, especially Maurice Moe and David Thompson. Make us confident in your promise of salvation and support us in our own journey of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We turn now to hymn number 763, Let Justice Flow Like Stream. Serve the Lord. We will. Thanks be to God.